Hello everyone, it's LaJoyce. It's so great to see you all. It's been a little while since I posted a video. So I thought about some things that um, I get a lot of questions about from friends and, and sometimes even you all as I post things on my Instagram page about supplements. So this um, talk today will be about supplements. The different supplements that I actually take and I'll describe to you how I take them and a little bit about each of them. All right. So today, the first thing I have on my agenda is prenatal vitamins. Prenatal vitamins are the basis of a good health, not only for pregnancy, but just for you as well. It, um, I suggest that you pick up a Whole Foods prenatal vitamin. This is my favorite one right here. I don't know if you can see that. This one is a prenatal vitamin from Whole Food, and the maker of it is Garden of Life, um, and it's a... Um, whole food organic certified whole food vitamin the only negative thing about these types of vitamins is that you have to take three of them a day however they work so much better for me and they're they're very readily absorbed by the body and utilized by the body so you don't have a lot of the side effects like constipation and things like that the overeating that I hear normal complaints of regarding the regular multivitamins I really am a big fan of these if you there are some other um, different brands of whole food ones as well, so you're not obligated to have to get the specific brand, but I suggest a whole food multivitamin first and foremost. Secondly, I have always been a component of this is just overall health, but most you'll find that most of these things are good to take anyways, regardless of if you're preparing for a baby or not, because it's to get your body in better condition. This one right here, the Ultimate Omega. The Ultimate Omega... It's a very high dose of your omega-3s. It also have, has your DHA, and the DHA is actually a very important component when you're um, trying for pregnancy because you want to equip your body to be able to grow a healthy, thriving baby. And DHA is really good for brain development with your baby. But also the other omegas that are in here are good for heart health. They also have some other good qualities about it, like arthritis or joints that are getting stiff and things like that. Your omegas are known for helping with things like that as well. But um, I love them. You have to take one tablet twice a day as far as this one. I guess it depends on the dosage that you get and the brand that you get. But this specific one is one tablet twice a day um, of the Ultimate Omega. And I got this from Vitamin Shop. Next, I would like to discuss vitamin C. And I take Ester C, the vitamin C. This specific one is gentle and it's non-acidic. And that's important because we don't want our bodies to be at a highly acidic um, state. A highly acidic body is not very kind to sperm and to um, implantation when we are trying to develop a baby. So the pH of your body does actually uh, affect, um, to some degree, the um, success of actually getting pregnant. So this vitamin C is non-acidic and it's made with bioflavonoids, which I heard are great, um, are great for you. And this specific form is more readily available than some other vitamin C's. It is a capsule form and it has powder inside the capsule so even though it's pretty big it's not that difficult to swallow. Once a day for these, thank goodness. Vitamin C. Also good for immunity. So I have not been sick. I, I can't even remember. I've been taking this for um, at least a couple years now. I have not even caught a cold or been sick or any of that since taking the vitamin C um, for that period of time. But I've also heard that it's, it's good for preparation when you're trying to plan for a baby. And when I say I hear or I've heard, this is from extensive research that I've done in different books, different resources, different online resources, um, different YouTube resources for credible people. Um, I love um, natural, naturalinfertilityinfo.com. Um, she has so much helpful information on there as well. And part of them is just because of my background, me being a nurse practitioner, um, some of these I've always known to be helpful for you. Next, I'll discuss the CoQ10. CoQ10, I know you guys probably are familiar with this for heart health, but I don't know if you guys know this, but it's also very good for egg health. And this specific one, um, Ubiquinol, is great because it's a more readily absorbed form of it. 
And the Ubiquinol costs more, unfortunately, than the regular CoQ10, um, but the Ubiquinol is definitely worth it. I want to say it was like a 5 to 10 times more effective and more potent than the regular CoQ10 that you take. So I believe that it's worth it, and if anything's going to help with this egg quality of mine, I'm willing to take the chance. So I have been taking the Ubiquinol for some time now. Next is DHEA. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get it in, in the system there. So DHEA is a synthetic form or artificial form of testosterone. So some um, specialists, reproductive endocrinologists, have found that a decrease, a lack of, or just not, or even borderline amounts of testosterone can affect egg quality. And I know that there is an institution in New York um, where there is a physician that highly recommends this. Um, I did a lot of research regarding that as well, and I found that if, if it's not going to hurt me, I might as well try it out. But I caution you to let your, your providers know when you're doing this because you don't want to overdose yourself with testosterone. So if you have a provider that's willing to at least check your testosterone levels every you know six months or so, if you're on DHEA, just to make sure you're not overdoing it, that would be my recommendation. Um, but the DHA is recommended for egg health, 25 milligrams three times daily. I had my, my last testosterone that I had done was not, was not abnormal. It wasn't really low. However, he, it, the studies had shown that even if you had normal levels, that the DHEA was beneficial. So I still take it, but I don't take it three times a day. I take it um, one to two times a day as a 25 milligram dose. And I did see some substantial changes in my um, FSH once I had started this. Um, so a few side effects that it may cause is a little bit of hair growth on the chin or more hairs on the face. I haven't noticed that much. Maybe one here or there, but easy to just pluck right out and keep moving. I haven't had any other side effects um, from the DHEA. Okay, next I'd like to discuss Vitex. <laughs> I'm so excited about Vitex. So many people have been telling me that Vitex was great, you know, and that, you know, it's so helpful for this or for that. Um, let me tell you, I, I bought it for a long time. I had two bottles of Vitex in my drawer that I didn't take because I was like, well, Vitex, I don't want it to, act, to react to my endometriosis by making... Um, a more hostile environment for the endometriosis. There's a lot of things that you do for pregnancy that endometriosis doesn't really like, especially when it comes to hormones or anything that's estrogen driven, because endometriosis is an estrogen dominant condition. So I um, I try to be very cautious of, of those types of things. So I fought it for a long time. After I had Gabriella and my ovulation decided to say goodbye, I decided to take a chance on the Vitex. Not only did my ovulation say goodbye, but my cycle started to shorten to like 24 days. 24, 21, 26 days. It was all over the place. Once I took the Vitex, for the first month, my cycle increased to 32 days. Normally, I would freak out about this. However, it's better for your, your cycles to be a little longer versus shorter because that means you're giving, during the luteal phase, which is the phase that the egg is attaching and growing and implanting, we want that phase to be longer so you can give that opportunity to be a successful pregnancy. So with a 24, 21 day cycle, um, I was limiting my chances of that. So Vitex for the first one increased my cycle to 32, but I also read that that was okay and that sometimes you get those lengthened cycles and then it'll normalize. So I'm glad I stuck with it because the next month um, it was 27 days and this current month that I'm in it was a 28 day cycle which is back to normal. Um, I had also been testing my ovulation very consistently and for this past month was the first month that I saw since Gabriella that the ovulation um, kit seemed to me to be normal like I'm using the the strips that I buy online and on and, um, Amazon so those strips are sometimes a little bit harder to detect than the regular one that you see a smiley face blinking at you however I it was closer to the control line than I had ever seen it before. And I had other signs of ovulation as well. So I'm pretty sure that I'd ovulated. And I must give the Vitex a lot of credit for that. Uh, we were on the verge of going to Clomid. And I um, told that my 
OBGYN that I would prefer to start the Vitex as well and I'm glad I did it because I think it's regulating me again. The next one I want to discuss is one that was recommended to me by my acupuncturist and that one is Don Kui. This specific herbal uh, supplement is a blood mover and the reason she prescribed this for me is to actually flush out the reproductive system, get things moving through it. A lot of times with conditions, especially such as endometriosis, things get stagnant in the actual uterus and it, it helps to move that sludge out. And this is a little bit graphic, but usually uh, when you have a cycle, sometimes you might see some of the dark and cloudy discharge or bleeding prior to the actual red bleeding. This almost gets rid of that completely. It makes your cycles much more healthy where you're having just the red flowing actual bleeding coming out versus the stagnation and the clots. So that's good for the reproductive system, also good for your cycles and endometriosis. I've been taking this for over a couple years now and I have noticed even much more recently like within the last year the, um, the pain that I would feel during uh, my cycles have definitely improved with this, not to mention that acupuncture also helps with that pain as well. So the next one on my agenda is chlorophyll. This happens to be the liquid form of chlorophyll, but you can also get chlorophyll in a capsule form. I take the chlorophyll, um, a, t a tablespoon in my smoothies is how I take this one, just to add a little bit of extra superfood to it. The reason I take it is to oxygenize my cells even more. So the same way that the CoQ10 is good for this, uh, the development of healthy cells at a basic cellular level, so is the chlorophyll good for that, but it's a different mechanism. Uh, this allows your, your cells to function at its highest level of functionality, and we need that when it's trying to develop a healthy, healthy eggs, a healthy baby, those types of things. So chlorophyll is great for you. All of your, um, all of your green leafy vegetables are always a great thing to make sure that you're high in when you're trying to get pregnant to keep those cells healthy. I take this green superfood and put a scoop of it in my smoothies as well. And if you don't have a smoothie, you can also just put a scoop of it in some apple juice and shake it up and have it in the morning before you go. But this is like your green drink for the day. There are uh, some um, plans and, and, and some reproductive specialists that advise you to take a green drink every day and to add at least one big green leafy salad every day to get those greens in. I usually try to have a salad every single day for lunch, especially while, while I'm working. But these right here are really good to supplement that. Or if you can't have a salad, you can have this and put some chlorophyll in the drink. And then you've got a huge green booster. Not to mention this has a ton of antioxidants in it as well. Last but not least, I just wanted to show you my maca boost. You can also get this in tablet form. But this is great. It's a great energizer. So if you're trying to, to do limited or no caffeine, this is a great way to give your body a little bit of boost in the morning time or if, whenever you need it for a snack. But it's great for reproductive health. It's also great for libido. So it helps those days when you just... <laughs> you just ain't feeling it. This will give you a little bit of extra boost um, and also you can your husband can have it too. And so if he's having any type of issues with libido and things like that, and I know during this journey sometimes sex becomes less fun than we would like for it to be. Um, so something like this is helpful every now and then. You always have to find a way to bring life back into that area, right? There's also royal jelly, which I don't have with me right now, but royal jelly is another supplement. It is actually a pollen form, a pollen-based supplement that supposedly the, the queen bee gets, which helps her to reproduce so um, easily. And, and it, it, it's one of those things that they found that it was so helpful for the queen bee that it might be helpful with reproductive system for women as well. So royal jelly, you can get it in a form where it comes in a honey. And you take a scoop of the honey, you could also put that in a smoothie. You're not supposed to heat it, so it has to be in something that's not going to be um, hot. 
um, at room temperature would be okay as well. And some people just take it and spoon it and just take it by the spoon. I used to take that all the time and I just haven't had a chance to add it back to, back to my regimen. But it's also an energy booster. So all of these, it's a lot of stuff, isn't it, y'all? So it's hard to keep up with all this stuff. And I suggest that you do not try to take the supplements freely. You get yourself a nice little pill box and um, put your pills in there because a lot of them you take for instance the vitex is a morning pill you should always take the vitex right when you get up before you eat at least 30 minutes before you have breakfast my don i have to have on an empty stomach so that i take right when i get up and right before i go to bed so that i don't have food within an hour of it there are the the other ones that i could take at one time I uh, break this one up. Of course, this one's twice a day. So there's a lot of different ways that I'm taking these things. So it's hard to keep up if you're not keeping them in a pill box. I will put some references down below on some people that I like and some resources that I like to go to when uh, trying to choose the supplements that work best for you during your journey. But I really, really, really hope this helps. I know it's a lot of information coming at you one time and don't feel like you have to pick up a thousand supplements at one time. Add maybe one or two at a time and see how it affects you and see what changes that you see come about. But I hope this helps. I appreciate that you guys came to watch me again today. I love you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless.